the vanilla extract uh, oftentimes is beaver butt juice. I didn't know that. Are you yeah. kidding me? I didn't know that. And, what? And there's another the word world. for it. Is he being serious? No, it's, yeah, that's true. Is there a connection between the science of food addiction and sorcery? Find out on this episode of LED Live. Welcome to LED Live. Today we are going to talk about the science of food addiction. Mm. Yeah? yeah? You oh, guys yeah. Are, are ready to do this? Oh yeah. I think if you've got questions, you're gonna have some answers today from a biblical perspective. And uh, we've been blessed to have Eric Wilson on our show. It's good to be back Yet here again, again. Mm. he's basically Hi, like family. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so welcome back. And uh, if you guys missed his previous show, you'll have to check it out. What did we talk about in the previous the show? The last one was called Appetite, Satan's Strongest Hold Upon Man. Mm. If you haven't watched that, you should go and watch that because it'll make a lot of sense in today's talk. Yeah, this they dovetail together. The first one lays a foundation spiritually that really, it, it really is eye-opening. All right. So I'm kind of very curious because, you know, there's a few things that are very hard to talk about, right? Mm -hmm. Food. Don't touch my plate. Right. Another one, music. Don't talk about my music. That's true. So these two things are, are a, a difficult thing to understand, but um, in today's modern world, there is actually a lot of science that gets poured into crazy simple things. So we're yes. gonna explore some of those things today and uh, thank you guys for stopping by. We hope you're blessed by today's talk. Amen. So take Amen. it away, Eric. How, how, how are you gonna introduce this? Well, it's good to be here again with everyone. and. I want to encourage all of our brothers and sisters out there that are watching. We thank you for your support for the show here and for Little Light Studios. We're going to take a look at this and we're, we're sharing this because it's something that I battled with. Mm. Um, in our last program where we did the, you know, the stronghold of appetite, most people think if you got a problem with appetite, we talked about obesity, we talked about... One of the things that shocked me was according to the CDC, 73% of all adults 20 years and older in America are overbeast or overweight. Wow. Or they're obese and overweight. Mm. I can 73%. Rem I can That's remember the first time I went to the doctor and I always was that kid that could just eat anything and never gained a pound until I was 30. Mm. And then uh, I can remember the first time that the doctor weighed me and was like, so you're slightly overweight, you know? And I was like, like what? No. <laughs> I am? So, well, for me, and I'm, I'm encouraging our friends and our brothers and sisters, it shocked me because I've battled with appetite. Well, I shouldn't say have. I'm done battling with it. But praise God, I battled with that for most of my life, from age 12 until in my 30s. Mm. I battled with appetite, actually mm. into my 40s. Mm. And I never was overweight. Yeah, I was so, going to say, I've seen old footage of you and stuff and the Dragon Revealed, check out that, but uh, you never looked overweight. No, I was never overweight, but I had an addiction to food and I couldn't stop it. Yeah. And so when we look at appetite, it's just, it doesn't mean just simply overweight or obese or fat or anything. It just means there is a, there's something that the enemy is has found a way to use inside of man. Mm. And we're gonna look because science actually is showing this now. Mm -hmm. So wow. that's anyway. good that there's a it's good that there's a standard because our bodies, our individual bodies are not a good barometer. That's right. The barometer is principles and also your habits. That's you're right. Take a look at that. That's mm -hmm. right. We would like to thank all of you who support this ministry through your donations and by buying merch from lightwear.shop. We cannot do this without you. And if you send in your pictures, we will put you on the show. In our last message, we showed how Babylon, as well as Sodom and Gomorrah, as well as the days of Noah, uh, all of those, the foundation for their sins was found in appetite. Wow. The gratification of unnatural appetite led to the sins that caused the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. God ascribes the fall of Babylon also to her gluttony and drunkenness. Indulgence of appetite and passion was the foundation of all their sins. 
Hmm. And if you want references on this, go back and watch our earlier program hmm. on the stronghold of Satan and appetite. There's so much in there that we showed from Scripture that will really encourage you. Hmm. So Sodom and Gomorrah, even the days of Noah, Sodom and Gomorrah, Esau, all those examples, and even Babylon, it was gluttony and drunkenness. Hmm. We're going to take a look here at some video clips that show how self-indulgent mm. and how appetite has such mm. a stronghold on our, our culture, our world today. Wow. And we're seeing eating competitions. Let me pause that for a moment. When you look at these eating competitions, I watched these people eating and I thought, that hurts my stomach. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could overeat back before the Lord set me free. I could overeat easily. Yeah. But there was a point where it hurt so bad that you just had to go, oh, I don't care how good it tastes, I don't want to eat anymore. Right. These guys are eating like two and three entire pizzas. I know. If and think, they're doing it fast. Isn't your stomach about the size of both of your fists together? I, I don't know. I Have think, you seen? I think that's kind of the rule of thumb is like, it's generally about the size of that. I thought right it was there. just one fist actually. But. Have you seen videos of what it looks like on inside of competition eaters and how the stomach can stretch and push your intestines up and no. it's like this whole thing. Oh, wow. We should include that. I'll try to find it. Okay, if you okay. can, that yeah. would be good. Seven consecutive time champion, Joey Chestnut, set a world record eating 69 hot dogs in 10 minutes. To put in perspective what 69 hot dogs looks like inside a human body, we brought in a one-of-a-kind anthropomorphic dummy complete with a hot dog stuff. Oh. 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 A human can stomach, on average, about one liter of food before the nausea reflex kicks in, signaling us to stop eating. But competitive eaters train their bodies to ignore this reflex. As a result, their stomachs are capable of holding down four plus liters of food, a capacity more than four times greater than the average stomach. When you eat so many hot dogs, your stomach expands and actually does push all of your organs out of the way. This is 69 hot dog buns, 69 hot dogs, and over two quarts of water. This is what it looks like inside the human body. Do you know what is amazing to me though is, any time that I have yielded to appetite and overeaten, I can I can tell because it, yeah. it affects the way I feel yeah. emotionally and it affects the way I think. You sit down and eat a huge meal, you don't want to go read your Bible afterwards. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you don't. Your you can sit and trying to cope. Yeah, yeah, you can sit and watch TV and go, oh, that's fine. You know, your Thanksgiving <laughs> dinner and I'm kicked back going, oh, I don't want to move, I overate. God does not want us to get to that point. You never uh, imagine Jesus going, oh, and he's burping and, you know, mm -hmm. I ate too much. He never did that. Mm -hmm. He wants our minds to be clear. So if my, if my stomach is affecting the way that I think, then I've got to bring the stomach into subjection to the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. sure. Now, this next video was startling. This video is a, it's one of a couple of different <sighs> restaurants that are like burger restaurants. Heart attack grill. And their entire goal there is to make you buy everything that's not healthy. They don't even sell healthy stuff in these places. But listen to what they look say. At the, look at the tagline here. Chase worth dying for. Wow. I mean, it's interesting that they even just put that on there. And is she a nurse? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is what caught me. After our last program, we talked, we showed from the Bible the, the connection between immorality and sensuality and appetite. Mm. And here, this yeah, restaurant. Have a yeah, that's what they're doing. Whoa. Nobody can eat that. And they dress like nurses. Sin City. Yeah, they're just open about that. I like Literally. People be. like love it. And it, okay, it's in Sin City and it is definitely gluttonous. And yeah, they're dressed like nurses, but their cleavage is all popping out. So it's, yeah, the century, it's like a, it's like a heart Hooters. attack Hooters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. literally. I feel like what this bo what our bodies can take is like a sign of God's grace. Amen. <laughs> uh, we can keep doing all these things and still live. Amen. Okay, look what Revelation says about Babylon, whose foundation of her sins was gluttony and drunkenness. 
It says, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught. Mm. For thy merchants, pay attention to that word, thy merchants were the great men of the earth, and by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Okay, now it's about to get interesting. Yes, <laughs> now it's going to get interesting. So the merchants, you said notice that because you're talking about like the people who are selling all this food and stuff, right? And, it, and the wealthies of the wealthy are, yeah, yeah these, these companies that are owned and all these yeah, yeah. food companies. Who don't yeah. even eat their own food. Yeah. Right. Right. This is the word sorceries that's used there in that text in Revelation. In the Greek, it's 5331, and it comes from 5332. The Greek word is pharmakia. That's where we get our word pharmacy from, mm -hmm. or pharmacist. But the Greek word, this is the definition. It means medication, magic, spell giving, witchcraft, a potion, a druggist, a poisoner, or a magician. Mm -hmm. that's, that's in the King James Bible. Mm -hmm. That's the word of God. So by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. So Satan is going to use sorcery to deceive the world. And I've heard videos before where people say, well, it's, it's the pharmaceutical companies or it's the, the drug companies. Mm -hmm. or, but you know what? Satan has figured out how he can use drugs to deceive everyone. And instead of him having to get us to smoke marijuana or drink alcohol or use cocaine, he has learned how to use the chemicals within the human body wow. to cause us to be deceived. Hmm. This is from a book called Councils on Diets and Foods. I recommend this book to everybody that's interested in victory over appetite. Councils on Diets and Foods, page 150. Satan is constantly on the alert to bring the race fully under his control, his dominion. His strongest hold on man is through appetite. Mm. And this he seeks to stimulate in every possible way. All unnatural excitants, that means stimulants, mm. are harmful and they cultivate the desire for liquor. Mm. All unnatural stimulants. It makes sense. I mm. mean, if Satan wants to get the most people he can get, everybody has to eat. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I'm going to I'm going to attack the thing that they, they need. Breathing and eating. Yeah. 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 So and I'm assuming since um, different food combinations once in the stomach turn into liquor that the desire of liquor is not necessarily drinking yes, alcohol. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Mm. Okay. I'm so glad you brought that up. That's exactly right because if you if you have poor food combining, like if you're eating different kinds of food that shouldn't be mixed together, um, some foods require a certain enzyme to digest. Other foods require a different enzyme to digest. And if you mix those two foods together, it's difficult for the stomach and actually can cause fermentation in the stomach. Overeating <laughs> will cause fermentation. I heard something about that before. Like, well, bread has yeast in it. And I heard somebody said that you can fail a, a breathalyzer if you eat a certain kind of bread or something. I haven't heard that on hmm, that. But wow. one thing my wife did find um, because she's been in education, she was in public education in school systems for almost 20 years. She said most of the teachers would come in and they would say like, especially grades kindergarten through fourth grade, she said the kids were acting crazy for the first mm. half of the day. And she said they found out why, because when you take milk and sugar and mix oh, it together wow. in the acid in the stomach, it forms alcohol. Wow. So all the cocoa pebbles and fruit loops and oh. milk and Two hours later, the kids are buzzing. Wow. Hmm. This is interesting. This is Scientific America. And you look at that plate that they've got on the front mm -hmm. of the cover with pizza and burgers and fries and onion rings, all of that stuff, you know, full of grease, full of salt. And the cover says, gluttony, are we addicted to eating? Mm. eating. And we're gonna look at just, some of these are just pictures. This is a, a recent one from Newsweek called Toxic Food. And on the front label, it says, warning, ultra processed mm. food raises the risk of diabetes, of cancer, of heart disease, obesity, and of dying of COVID-19. Because your um, immunity is messed up. 
That's exactly right. Wow. So this is not, we don't have to go to the Bible to find this. God's word is true, but now the rocks are crying out yeah. because people are like, I don't want to hear that part of the Bible. You know, don't talk to me about that. I'll skip over that chapter. And God's like, I'm going to put it in Newsweek so you'll hear. <laughs> now, it said all unnatural excitants, stimulants. This is the number one excitant, excitotoxin in the world. It's called MSG, monosodium glutamate. I never used to worry about it and still I started, until I started sensing the effect it was having on me. Now, I'll give you a couple of examples. I used to work um, for a, a home security company where we did uh, pre-wires and houses for security systems and cameras. And I was outside in the heat all day long. And my, my best friend and I worked uh, in the band together because we had teams. And I would always take a, a big, huge 64 ounce thing of like Welch's 100% pure grape juice with me during the day. So in case my blood sugar got low, I didn't want to eat in between meals. So I would just drink some juice. Well, I started noticing, even though it was 100% natural grape juice, I started noticing that I would take a drink of it, and the one I was getting was, uh, it was grape and black cherry. It was my favorite. It was like, I loved it. But I would take a drink of it, eight ounces of it, and put it down. Five minutes later, I was opening it back up, drinking it again. And I found mm. myself going through one or two of those a day. Oh, wow. wow. And I, I, it's like I couldn't, and it was the taste. Yeah. Hmm. And then one day I flipped it over just out of curiosity and looked at the ingredients and Natural it said, flavors. well, it said 100% pure grape juice, you know, concentrate, water, natural flavors. And I was like, what does that mean? I mean, what is, it's grape juice. What do you right. have to add flavors to it? Well, then I found out. I was looking through a book at the health food store that was specifically on all the ingredients, the ingredients that you can't pronounce and you go, I don't even know what that is. It tells what they are. <laughs> natural flavors it said more than 90 percent of the time it's msg wow. it's a uh, a flavor enhancer that they put into that so that you keep drinking because the more you drink the more you eat the more you buy yeah originally monosodium glutamate was uh developed by uh, an asian man i don't remember if he was chinese or japanese but he had developed it to make the rations for the troops in the military taste better because they were having a hard time getting their military to eat the rations. Um, so he made this and all of a sudden everybody was like, I love these rations. <laughs> um, and he didn't know the damage that it would do. And I know there's debates about it, but look, if you're, if you want to know the truth, you'll know the truth when you hear it. Yeah. Monosodium glutamate not only destroys the brain nerves, it corrupts the brain nerves. It creates tons of free radicals mm -hmm. inside the brain and it also destroys the liver. There's a doctor named Dr. Russell Blaylock that has done some unbelievable research on this. He wrote a book years ago called um, Excitotoxins, The Taste That Kills. But he's also available. You can watch some of his powerful documentaries on YouTube for free. You'd actually found out by calling a company, an ice cream company that... Yes. You want to tell that real quick? Well, there was a, uh, a vegan, a non-dairy ice cream that I and my family loved. We, we had used it for years. Uh, it was called Rice Stream. And I mean, loved it. And one day I had this particular kind they used to make. It was like a little like oatmeal cream pie ice cream with ice cream in the middle. I, I liked those, but I could buy one of them and it was enough. One day I went to get one and I ate it on the way home. Before I got home, I found myself turning around to go back to the grocery store to buy another one. Oh, wow. No, I'm not kidding. Yeah. I went back three times on that one trip home to get another one. Oh, wow. And I got home and it was like, I knew something was not right. I mean, I was like, God, forgive me. What's wrong with me? Oh, wow. And I flipped it over. And before they had never put that word natural flavors, mm. but now the word natural flavors was there. So I called Image Foods to find out what's in the natural flavors. Mm -hmm. And the lady was really polite. She said, mm -hmm. it's proprietary. You know, we can't give everybody what our special makes our, our flavors so good. And I, I was patient, but I said, ma'am, I said, we've got a member of my family that has health problems when it comes to MSG. Mm -hmm. I said, is the natural flavors MSG? And she said, no. I said, is it free glutamate or any form of free form glutamic acid. 
and she got really quiet and mm. she said, sir, if that's a problem for someone in your family, I would encourage you to look for another vegan ice cream. Mm. Mm. Wow. So even though it wasn't MSG, mm -hmm. it was a free form glutamic acid or glutamate, which is the same thing. Wow. Yeah. And it's just sad that we live in a world that they can't just like outright, yeah. this is what we're doing. It's like buried in all this right. terminology, legal, yeah. schmeagle. Well, you remember the merchants of this earth are yeah. waxed rich yeah. through the abundance? Yeah. That's, the they're making money because yeah. they're selling food because it tastes. Yeah. Wow. Now let's look at this. Back a number of years ago, I don't remember if the trade name or whatever ran out, the legality with that but they were able to start, I think they've got almost 300 different names now that they can name MSG. Wow. It doesn't have to say MSG on it. I'm just gonna list a couple of the names. You can do your own research online. These are some of the common names. Glutamic acid, glutamate, monopotassium glutamate, calcium glutamate, yeast extract. Oh, who would have that? Now what is that? Like, are we talking like a brewer's yeast kind of thing? No, it's yeast extract. You'll look on some of the ingredients in your food and mm. you'll see yeast extract, it's MSG. And you would just, just under a different deal. name. Yeast. So I have a question. Can a company put no MSG on their packaging? Brand? And still have these in it? Yes. Oh. But, so they're different forms of MSG? Is no, it, it's, it's still it's MSG, the but they can call it. Uh, glutamate is a natural occurring molecule mm -hmm. in different types of food. The presence, how much glutamate is there, is what makes it uh, dangerous or not dangerous. Because the way God designed food, the glutamate wasn't an issue because there were other things in there that canceled out the negatives mm -hmm. or enhanced the positives. But what they have found is they can go in, and I'll, I'll, I'll give an example. I used to work at a health food store and the, the man that did the buying for the food he told me one time, he said, Eric, he said, this one is like the number one. If you have somebody that comes in, you know they're sick, this is the organic food you wanna to sell to them from this company. And I said, well, how about this one? This one says organic. He said, Eric, he said, if you'll look in the fine print from our sellers, our suppliers, they will say, and this is just an example, if it says 100% organic apple juice, only 70% of the apples in there have to be organic for them to label the whole bottle organic. Whoa. The other 30% could have come from Pesticide what? City, what? Oh, what? but they could still label it as being organic. So that's how twisted and messed up our world has begun. Man. So with MSG, it's the same way. But let me just show you some of the names, the common names. Yeast extract, hydrogelized protein, calcium caseinate. Hmm. There's all kinds of people. We buy vegan cheese or non-dairy cheese. And if it has caseinate in it, it's got MSG. Sodium caseinate autolyzed yeast, gelatin, textured protein, soy protein isolate, or whey protein concentrate. And these are just a few of the names. Hmm. And it's not something to be scared of, but what I found was when my wife and I first started looking at this, it made us nervous because we, we were kind of angry because we we're like, man, I don't have time to look at the ingredients list on everything. Hmm. But then we watched a documentary called... Um, what the hell? No, it was... Uh, Forks over knives? No, hold on a second, it was <laughs> Secrets. Um, secrets something. The name will come back to me. Or Mikey, if you want to look it up, if you get a chance. Um, secret Ingredients, that's the name of the documentary. Mm. I, would watch, I would recommend that to every person that's watching. Mm. It's called Secret Ingredients. Mm. They went through and they showed a family that had, I don't remember, 27 chronic illnesses in this one family, including their children. Mm -hmm. Children, little boys that had chronic illnesses and the doctors couldn't figure out any of the problems, what was causing it, the wife had problems, the uh, father had problems. Then she started doing research on pesticides and GMO food and MSG. They got rid of all the GMO foods, all the pesticides in their food and all the MSG. Every one of the problems were gone in a year and a half. Every one of the problems. Mm -hmm. Cancer, Amazing. all kinds of health issues that were, they all disappeared. Hmm. All the children, all their health issues disappeared. And I was like, okay, I, it, this is worth this to me. Hmm. If I don't have time to read the ingredients, then something's wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about how you're saying the merchants are selling, or well, the merchants sell uh, clearly, and it's pharmacia. sorcery or pharmacia. And people, they, 
they what do they call it? Uh, it's like therapeutic eating or whatever. Like the, when they're depressed, they eat and comfort food. That, yeah, comfort food. That's clearly showing you that there's something in this food that can medicate you in some way. Like that's what the the, the definition of yes. pharmacia was medicine or whatever. So yes, that yeah, makes sense. And w I think the next slide or two, it's going to show some of that. Let me just give you a couple of examples. How many people have ever bought Doritos before and you couldn't finish, I mean, you couldn't stop yourself from eating the whole bag? Yeah, of course. Or Pringles. I mean, like yeah. a Pringles, I mean, you know, you take one, and like, I'm gonna get 10. Well, they advertise, well, they advertise that once you popped, you can't stop. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a reason why. Look in Doritos, right there it is, monosodium glutamate. Mm, wow. Then you've also got natural and artificial flavors. You've got sodium caseinate. I didn't even highlight those. Yellow five. Wow. Yeah. I mean, there's just some... Red 40. Huh. Mm. Is that's that an inside the... joke from the last episode. Check it out. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the red that you're not supposed to eat? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. If it's artificial... It's that means like, why, why would they even do that on a yellow chip? Like, <laughs> why do you need to put something red in there? Blue. Yeah. Well, blue. you got to think about this. If it's artificial, God never intended us to eat it. He yeah. gave us food that he created to eat. He didn't yeah. say, oh, yeah, you can make a... I mean, like, you're going to go in a lab with some chemicals and... and call that food this one was from a, a chicken vegetable flavor and this one was scary too look at this monosodium glutamate hydro hydrolyzed corn and soy protein um autolyzed yeast extract natural and artificial flavor autolyzed torula yeast extract i think it's interesting like in california you always see these labels that say like known to cause cancer in california <laughs> only California, but it's like on anything, exactly. like water hose or a thermos or whatever. Yep. I just think it's funny, too, that we put on there natural and artificial flavoring. I mean, why don't you just put stuff? Yeah, There's stuff, stuff in, in there. this. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like that says nothing about flavoring. Oh. It's scary. It's scary. I mean, who would think soy protein is going to be anything bad, you know? Mm -hmm. Except for the fact that almost all soy is GMO. That's just true. It's yeah. one of the highest you know, we're, GMO. We're at such a weird place right now. I bet that they could make a marketing out of this. Like, they could joke. They could highlight all the worst chemicals in there and be like, enjoy your cancer-causing chemicals. And people are like, ha ha, that's funny. I know. Like, they wouldn't really do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man. It's sad. It's sad. Now we're going to look at a video and this is, this is very interesting. And the lady that did this video, she's not, as far as I know, a scientist. It's not some renowned, you know, Harvard medical school, but I did research and found everything that she talked about from other scientists. She's hundred percent on. Mm -hmm. Listen research. to what she's going to say. That red and yellow sleeve, that certain flavor in the oil that you can't quite put your finger on, that one-two combo punch of sugar and salt. What exactly is it that makes McDonald's fries so perfectly craveable, so addictively munchable? Time after time, visit after visit, we found out. <laughs> so it's a combination of stuff. There is, and it, it's going to get more. Watch this. Even without MSG, they know how to create an addiction through taste. Wow. Sugar and salt are two of the most addictive foods in the world. Sugar has even been likened to a drug. Dietitian Cassie Bjork told Healthline, research shows that sugar can be even more addicting than cocaine. Sugar activates the opiate receptors in our brain and affects the reward center, which leads to compulsive behavior despite the negative consequences like weight gain, headaches, hormone imbalances, and more. That helps explain why the fries are so addicting. McDonald's coats their fries in dextrose, a form of sugar, to make them more consistent in their golden brown appearance, and then pounds them with salt when they are pulled from the fryer. When salt and sugar are combined in this sort of balanced equilibrium, the brain floods with dopamine the neurotransmitter that produces feelings of pleasure and our willpower can't hope to compete. Mm. I guess that's another thing to remember is that not all sugar is sweet. You know, that's why you're not tasting sweetness on the fry, but it's still the chemical composition is that's that right. of sugar. Yeah. And almost, almost all fast foods, and this is just the fast foods, they have found that there is an exact ratio of sugar, salt, and fat oil mm -hmm. that if they use that ratio it releases dopamine in the human brain yep. wow. and dopamine is a feel-good wow. hormone it's addictive people want that you can go on youtube and find out how to do dopamine dopamine detoxes you know to get that junk out of your body where you've overloaded on it 
these these fry, I don't know what they're made of. I mean, I guess they're made out of potato, but if they go cold, they just taste horrible, and you can't rewarm them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. But in that moment, they're just so good. And they talk about that. I don't know if we included that, but this video right. talks about how long that lasts. Oh, wow. Remember that natural beef flavoring? Well, there's another weird side effect of it. When the ingredients break down during the cooking process, they create naturally occurring monosodium glutamate, or MSG. There have been a lot of rumors about MSG that have been debunked over the years, but researchers have discovered one actual property of MSG. It interferes with the satiation mechanism in our brains and has been proven in some studies to increase overall food intake in laboratory animals. That means when you start eating fries, you may not be able to stop stuffing your face. It's not your fault, it's science. So, so it's basically shutting off the mechanism that that your body has a natural way to say I'm full. To or, say I'm satiation, done, so yeah, stop. it means I'm full. I, I feel satisfied. Yeah, and so all of a sudden it's like block that thing, and it's just you just keep intake and intake. It chemically turns that off, so you keep eating. So the more you eat, the more you buy. It's about money. And, the, and this is where it's sad. It's sad that we live in a world where we have huge companies like this that don't say, how can I produce something that is good for the person nope. or whatever? It's literally like, we don't care what this is actually doing to you as long as you buy more of it. That's the That's love right. of money is the root of all evil because even the chemicals that they put in these foods, they just make them last longer on the shelf. So they yes. have a longer shelf life to be bought. It's all about Instead money. We don't care about what those chemicals do to the person's body, just yeah. as long as we can sell it for longer. And I mean, if there is 200 names for MSG and they're all hidden under whatever, that means that somebody took them to court. It's deception. And in yeah. that court system, they found a way to work around that. That's you know. exactly right. Now, this, this is the thing. And this is, I want to encourage people. It's not just fast foods. Remember what that warning label said and what that woman is processed, yeah. heavily processed. So the, the more that we can eat stuff that's not already in a, a box or in a can or it's already been processed, the more that we can make food the way our grandparents did. Yeah. My wife told me that. She said, Eric, she said, instead of us buying beans in a can, I know it's faster. If I know I'm going to eat beans for that week, let's put a crock pot on and we'll have beans for the whole week. Mm -hmm. And you, know, you can get them whenever you want them. But we're making them at the house. It's just beans, and I added the salt. I know right. what's in the food. That's good. So we're learning how to just go in and eat the way our grandparents did. Amen. When you go into a grocery store, I remember learning about how strategically um, each aisle is laid out and how the things that are the hardest to get are out on the edges. They put the milk in the back because they know that everybody's going to come through there to get the milk. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's like the there's so foods. much thought that goes into this. <laughs> that we're literally going through a gauntlet to try and like, yeah. you know, survive. Yeah. It's nuts. And then you're I in the aisle and there's all these candy while <laughs> yeah. you're sitting there waiting you know? like, oh, those M&Ms yeah. right there. I heard, I heard one man one time that was a science and a, a researcher and he said something. He said, when you go into the grocery store and you go through the produce aisle to get to everything else, he said, once you go through the produce aisle, he said, you've lost almost every bit of your nutrition. Mm. He said, once you step out of the produce, like I'll give you an example, like a salad, People sometimes will make a salad for tomorrow. When you cut vegetables up, you've got two hours and they lose 85% of their vitamins and minerals. Oh, two know. hours once they're sliced. Whoa. So it's like, you know, when we're making salads now, I make the salad when I'm about to eat it. Right, because yeah. now they got the bags of salad and the box. If like, it's been sliced wow. and cut, there's, there's no vitamins or minerals almost left. 85% of them are gone within two hours. Hmm. So, I don't know that. But it makes the difference because you talk about people that have got great health, they know that. And they eat simply, they eat the things in, that's got the most nutrients, the most mm. nutrient dense foods. And then, this, and then the same with cooked vegetables too. Like there's a certain yes. point where you can like steam them and stuff, but once you cook them, they just turn to sugar or starch well, you, or whatever. You lose a lot of the, the vitamins and minerals. Yeah. yeah. So let's go on and look at uh, another part of this clip. From the earliest days of McDonald's, way back when it was a barbecue restaurant run by the actual McDonald brothers, fries were on the menu. And that helps explain how McDonald's has managed to make such delicious fries. When you've been doing something for the better part of a century, you get really good at it. <laughs> I didn't include the clip and I wish I had. Um, they actually talk about something that originally McDonald's, they did something to make their fries have a distinctive flavor. They added oil, but to the oil, they mixed in beef talon or beef tallow. Mm. 
it gave it a beef flavor because it was beef that was being added. Well, that became a problem because people found out. So they took away the beef tallow um, and they put in just the oil, but they added a synthetic beef flavor, which has a portion, some portion of beef still in it. So the fries themselves, they, they say, we They're can't tell you these are, are vegetarian or vegan. Wow. Hmm. So it, it's not saying that you're a sinner if you're eating beef. I mean, obviously that's not a sin in the Bible. Hmm. Is it healthy for you? That's up for you to decide. Right. Hmm. Now this was a clip from 60 Minutes, and this, was, uh, this one's a, a few minutes in length, but it's powerful. Listen to what he says. As the Thanksgiving weekend comes to a close, you may feel as overstuffed as that turkey you ate. And if you're overweight, and the chances are you are, it's probably because you eat too much, too much of the wrong stuff. Most of the wrong stuff we eat comes in a bottle, a can, or a box, food that's been processed. Much of that food has been flavored. The flavoring industry is the enabler of the food processing business, which depends on it to create a craving for everything from soda pop to chicken soup. It is Willy Wonka and his chocolate factory as a multi-billion dollar industry, an industry cloaked in secrecy. But recently, Givaudan, the largest flavoring company in the world, allowed us in to see them work their magic. Literally. Secrecy and magic yeah, literally, and billions a, of right. dollars. <laughs> That's interesting that you used the word magic. And billions. Yeah. I mean, we just talked about the, the merchants of the earth were waxed rich the through magic. the abundance of your delicacies and the sorcery. Right. Magic. Yeah, because it's not for the benefit of you. It's for the benefit of them. That's right. There's a lot of secrecy involved in your profession, correct? Our intellectual property are our formulas. Without that, we have nothing. So there's a lot of secrecy. You really don't want anyone to know. Yeah, wow. I, I actually um, did some video work for a cracker company. I won't tell which one, but I mean, I had to sign away all kinds of disclosures. There was only certain places that they would actually let me go in and video. I could not video the actual process of, of where the stuff was. I could only see it being put in the boxes. And I mean, it was just like, wow, it was pretty, pretty intense. And it really made you think like, and this particular company was a vegan gluten-free cracker that was like literally uh, sold as a very, very healthy alternative, but nobody knew what was in it because they can't tell you. I'll tell you, wow. uh, <laughs> I worked in a slaughterhouse for a short few months. <laughs> I didn't say that too long, but uh, I was in the sausage room and I'm standing on top of this giant vat with this corkscrew going and I had to dump these powders and stuff in there. And he would tell me, you know, fill up this much of these buckets of powder. And there was a pink one. And to this day, I still can't find what he called it. I don't know what it was really called, but it, he called it Curavis. It was pink. And he said, don't breathe that. It'll kill you. <laughs> he threw some cuss words in there, but he said, he was very serious. Don't breathe that. Don't It'll breathe kill it, but we're going to feed it to people. Right. <laughs> yeah. And you're just dumping it in there. Wow. And, and I'm thinking it was some kind of preservative, probably. That's terrifying. That's scary, yeah. Wow. That company Do you know, doesn't exist if, anymore. <laughs> if somebody, you know, I'm a vegetarian for health reasons. If somebody is going to eat meat, though, I'm going to tell you the best thing that you can do for yourself and for your family is go buy it grass fed, mm. organic, no right. pesticides, no hormones injected. Don't <laughs> buy the stuff at the grocery store. But it's terrible. Even but, with that, you have a pesticide farm and a natural farm right next to each other. I know. There's cross contamination. Cross -contamination. I know. But I'm just, I'm saying, Try your best. Best Try your best. do the best you can. Yeah. But You're, you should also go and tour a slaughterhouse and some other yeah. things that would really probably cure you of most of that. Well, there's <laughs> another documentary that I would encourage people to watch. Don't watch it um, with your little children, though. It's called Food, Inc. Oh, yeah. It is the most, I watched it with my two children when they were like in their teens. And both of them were just like, dad. I mean, they showed yeah. what happens to where we get that food in all different kinds of food, not just meat. Yeah, it's called Food Inc. I've seen machines just like come up around the cow's head and yeah. spin them all around and crazy it's, stuff. It's sad. It's sad. Now he's going to go in and he's going to talk with one of the flavor scientists that helped to develop these different flavors. And listen to what she says. I have butyric acid artificial and then I have butyric acid natural. 
All flavors are combinations of chemicals. Artificial flavors are largely man-made. Natural flavors come from nature, but not necessarily from what the label implies. For example, strawberry creations. Strawberry and vanilla flavor can come from the gland in a beaver's backside. So what we do is just uh, manipulate them and create with them and give the impression of, you know, papaya or, or the strawberry. A beaver? Yes. So if it says natural strawberry flavoring, it may be from a beaver's bottom. Okay. Being from a strawberry. Colors I've too. heard of this. I recently That's brought scary. this to the attention of Brittany that there's the vanilla extract uh, oftentimes is beaver butt juice. I didn't know that. Are you yeah. kidding me? I didn't yeah. know that. And, what? And there's another the word world. for it. Is he being serious? Yeah. No, it's, it's yeah, that's true. But this is just really eye-opening. Mikey, like, I need you to send that to me. I oh, need to yeah. know that because we use vanilla ex oh. organic. And I'm like, I don't want an organic I, beaver. Organic beaver. <laughs> I would like to know who, who first discovered that. Right. Yeah. 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 buns of this animal. You know, this animal. some drunk dare. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, the like red vanilla. that they use to color um, peppermints, yeah. the red and white peppermints, yeah. it's actually from a beetle. They crush it and it has a red dye that comes yeah. out of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here. Have you heard of that before? No, I feel like I we was... need to have a bunch of articles in uh, this. Uh, yeah, there right. should be some serious yeah, sources in the description. <laughs> cited. But this is really eye-opening when you see, like, you, you buy stuff from a store, food, you consume it, and you don't think about there's some scientists walking yeah. around in a lab yeah. creating your food, man. Yeah. That's straight sorcery like we were it saying. Is. Yeah, it is. it is scary. L listen as she goes on. We're eating fat on fat on sugar on fat with flavor. And much of what we're eating with these flavors, you have to ask yourself, is it really food? Dr. David Kessler is the former head of the FDA. He is Dr. No. He's bent on getting America to kick its bad habits. We're living in a food carnival. These flavors are so stimulating. They hijack our brain. Kessler believes flavorists are accomplices, the hired guns of the food industry. They make food super palatable. What's wrong with that? Don't we want the richness of good taste? Of course, food has to be pleasurable. It has to be desirable. But look around, Morley. Look around this country, and what do you see? Ask the rest of the world how they view Americans, and they will say, we don't want to look like them. Wow. Yeah. That's the former head of the FDA. Yeah. Really? That, that, there's got to be this crazy correlation between the Food and Drug Administration, and it's like, they're the ones that are like green lighting a lot of this stuff, but then they're the ones that are giving you the medicines to fix it. So the fact that that, that entity is in bed with both sides is, is, is a it difficult is. one for me. It um, is. Thinking about how much the world's changed in 200, 300 years or something like like he said, our brains have been hijacked by food, but not also f not just food, video games, social media, yeah. television, and we're just like staring at these glowing screens while we're eating this addictive food. Our brains are just completely hijacked. Like and, just, Sa and Satan knows if he can control the brain, the brain, the mind, that's the only avenue through which God can reach us. Mm -hmm. oh, dude. So if he can destroy the mind through any of those, mm -hmm. he destroys God's opportunity to save and set us free. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what Mikey was bringing up, and Kendi touched on this too. You know, the Bible says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We have endorphins that are released inside of our body and our, our glands. We have pheromones, and pheromones are the, the smell that comes off our body mm. based on what's happening in the mind. Um, especially like if there's potential for male and female in a reaction, there's certain smells that the body releases to let the other person know. Animals, especially mammals, do this all the time. It's a smell that lets another person know, hey, I'm interested. Wow. Um, but those aren't the ones we're focusing on. We're focusing on the dopamine and the oxytocin. The dopamine is, uh, it's a pleasure, but it's also a safety. It's a, a feeling of security and, and pleasure and accomplishment. That is what they were talking about, about the dopamine receptors and the opiate receptors. When mm. dopamine is released through the food, it causes you to feel good eating the food. And that's why we keep getting another chip. 
That's why we keep getting another fry or we keep getting another drink of that, you know, natural flavors juice because it releases a chemical inside. And as it's releasing those chemicals, I'm yielding to intemperance. Mm. And intemperance is the foundation of almost every other sin. Mm. So Satan says, if I can take that out, if I can control that part of them, the rest of the sins become easy. Mm. I know for myself that if in my past, if I had overeaten, it was easier to yield to other sins. Mm. If, if, if I've overeaten, it was easier to say, oh, I'm just going to compromise and watch this movie. I know it's rated R, but it's okay. Mm. Whereas if I was on, on a, a, a more careful diet or I was you know, restraining myself from not overeating, I could look at that and I could see it with reason through the Spirit of God and say, I don't want to watch that. Yeah. So if I could say, if I can stand my ground on what's necessary, it'll be easier for us to stand on the Word of God with any other temptation that comes. Well, I was just thinking, you know, it is a God-made thing and it's not bad. It's right. just the way it's being triggered. And, and when I get to share the gospel with people and I can tell that they're receptive to it, man, I re like Amen. I'm inside, I'm getting excited, I'm rejoicing. And then when it happens, I'm like, dude, that, I want to do that again. Like that's that addictive, you know? And it talks about the angels rejoicing when one repentant Amen. sinner. And, and I think that that's the type of things that God put us put in us. Like when you give your wife a flower and you see her shine or whatever, you're like, oh, I don't want to do that again, you know? Amen. Yeah. Well, it's God's natural way for to get us to, to, to do that action again. I mean, he gave us natural pleasure that when we eat, hey, that was a good thing. Do that again. And it's just been hijacked and changed and stuff. I mean, eating is such an intimate part of, mm -hmm. of humanity that. This is just the devil twisting what God has naturally built up. Yeah. Yeah. So and I'm glad you brought that up, Mike. You know, the chemicals in there, the dopamine, the oxytocin, the endorphins, the pheromones, those were created by our Savior, by our God. Mm -hmm. But Satan has perverted them. Yeah. And that's what he does with everything. He takes yeah. something that's right and he twists it so that it's not right anymore. Mm -hmm. So this is helping us to understand how he's doing that. Mm -hmm. Now, when I drive by a fast food restaurant, like, Ten years ago, mm -hmm. it was a temptation. It's right. like, man, you know, those fries smell good, and mm -hmm. he was like, oh, I just want to remember what those tasted like. Mm -hmm. Now it's like there's no, there's like nothing there. I'm just like, it's dead. It's You're just dead a fries. list of chemicals. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it's not even real food. So okay. it's help. It's helped me to be able to say, I'm not going to do that because I know, mm -hmm. I know now what's what's happening there, and I know what Satan's trying to do through those things yeah. to me. So you can't counter it, eat some fries and eat a bowl of salad. No, <laughs> it, it's not that you don't, you don't balance the good and evil. God's like, I want it all to be good. Yin yang, yeah. yin -yang diet here. So we were told, you know, about Babylon for thy merchants were the great men of the earth, your merchants. And we just heard it was billions of dollars just in the flavoring industry. And by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And this is a, a picture of Aww. representing, you know, childhood Children. obesity. And this, this was scary to me because over 20%, I think it was 21% of children under 12 years old now are obese in America. And it's interesting when you go to restaurants and stuff and you look at the children's menu. What is on the children's menu? It is this. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's literally what, like, they only eat burgers, fries, and mac and cheese. <laughs> I yeah. mean, every restaurant, doesn't matter if you're at a Mexican restaurant, yeah. they'll serve you that. Yeah, I see broccoli in there. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's it's sad because the kids don't, they can't choose at this point. You no. know, they're eating what their family's feeding them or what, what tastes good to them. They don't have a logical way to say, I should really eat something that's good for my body. You know, right. it's just not. And, you know, and as they grow up, that affects us. Mm -hmm. I mean, I grew up eating uh, biscuits and gravy. I mean, mm -hmm. that was just my grandmother made us biscuits. Man, it's the most unhealthy thing in the world. Mm -hmm. It's got Crisco in there and, mm -hmm. you know, buttermilk and, you know, sugar and salt and oil. And it wasn't good for me. Mm -hmm. um, we, it's harder to, to unlearn those things. Mm -hmm. So if we can start, even, even at my age, I'm young compared to what we're going to be in heaven. Mm -hmm. So if I can make changes now, they last. And if we can raise our children and encourage people, don't beat them down if you see them doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. Encourage them. Say, hey, try this and, and just be, show what God's way will do in your life so that other people will desire it. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to look at a different part of appetite for a few minutes. Most people, when they think about appetite, they think about obesity and overweight. That's the problem with appetite. 
but there's a lot of people that struggle with appetite like I did, never struggled with being overweight. Mm. Bulimia nervosa. These people struggle with a with with something that's spiritually rooted. Now I want to show you just the definition. It says an emotional disorder involving distortion of body image and obsessive desire to lose weight in which bouts of extreme overeating are followed by depression and self-induced vomiting, purging, or fasting. It's also known as an eating disorder in which a large quantity of food is consumed in a short period of time, Mm -hmm. often followed by feelings of guilt and shame. Mm -hmm. Hmm. It's like Benji. The world won't say it, but we, as sons and daughters of God, this is a spiritual problem. Mm This is not just a psychological, physical problem. This is a spiritual problem. And this is, I found this picture and I was like, wow. So you have this thin girl looking at herself in the mirror, but what she sees in the mirror is not the truth. Mm -hmm. It's the illusion that Satan is putting in her mind. Mm -hmm. Satan is the one telling her that. Mm-hmm. Satan's the one that tells somebody, God doesn't love you anymore. You've done this too many times. You've gone mm-hmm. too far. You've, you've grieved the Holy Spirit. That's Satan's voice. Mm-hmm. That's not God's voice. So this woman, she has been influenced by the enemy. Here's another lady. And you look how thin this lady is. And I'm not saying being thin is bad. And it's not a sign of anorexia. But that's what she's dealing with. Mm. She's looking at, at, and this is just a simple burger, and it looks like there might be some slice of meat on there, but it's not like one of those ones we saw in that video. Mm-hmm. And she's got her mouth taped closed because she's worried about her weight. And look at her. How could she work? She could put on 40 pounds and not have to be worried about mm-hmm. her weight. This is called anorexia nervosa. And if you look at the lady that is portrayed here, that's sad. Mm-hmm. It's, it's tormented. Guilt, shame, uh, nervousness, not understanding, confusion of face. The definition for anorexia is a lack or loss of appetite for food as a medical condition. They put that in there as medical because they don't want you going to the church to get help with this. Unfortunately, most of our churches, many of our churches don't know how to deal with that Mm -hmm. because they don't know, they don't understand that there's a spiritual cause. Mm -hmm. If I go to the doctor, I don't want them just putting a Band-Aid on my leg that just got hacked off in a car wreck. Mm -hmm. I mean, a Band-Aid is not going to fix the problem. I want you to fix the root cause. Mm -hmm. If I've got cancer, don't say, well, take this pill to get rid of the pain. What caused the cancer Fix the root. Then they say it is an emotional disorder characterized by an obsessive desire to lose weight by refusing to eat. The scripture says in Proverbs, For as a man or a woman thinketh in their heart, so is he. For out of the heart are the issues or the springs of the life. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we have to do to gain victory over appetite or to gain victory over anorexia or bulimia or whatever is get the programming right here first. Correct what's going on in the heart and the mind first. And the best way to do that is by this. If you've been rejected, find out how much God says, I've accepted you. I love you with an everlasting love. I will never leave you or forsake you. All of a sudden your day can completely change. Mm and that your image of yourself that the enemy is putting in front of you, mm-hmm. God will pierce through that darkness. Mm-hmm. He'll yeah. say, you're my daughter. You're my son. Stand up and be who I called you to be. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, his victory will become ours. Mm-hmm. In Revelation chapter 18, verse 1 and 2, it says, Babylon has fallen, for she has become the habitation of devils. Remember, there's Jerusalem. Or Jerusalem and Babylon. Jerusalem is the city of God's people. Babylon is the city of the enemy's people. Babylon has become the habitation, the dwelling place of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hate-filled bird. When we open the door to the enemy and he comes in, this is how he begins influencing our lives. So like with what you guys do so much to share on, on the dangers of Hollywood or of video games or the music industry, it opens the door. 
it opens the door so that enemy can come in. Yeah. And often when an evil spirit comes into a life, I'm not saying into a person, when it comes into a person's life, it can often bring others with it. So maybe there's a demon of rejection that the door gets open to because you were rejected by somebody. Mm. Well, that demon of rejection can bring bitterness at being rejected. It can bring a spirit called um, lust mm. that tries to fix the rejection. Rejection means I don't feel any dopamine or oxytocin. So the devil says, well, I can get you to start lusting or self-abuse or looking at immor immorality and all of a sudden you're feeling that dopamine. So the devil's just bringing all kinds of people to the party yeah. to destroy you. We must inevitably be under the control of the one or the other of the two great powers that are contending for the supremacy of the world. It is not necessary, this is what you were saying, for us deliberately to choose the service of the kingdom of darkness in order to come under its dominion. We have only to neglect to ally ourselves with the kingdom of light and mm. truth. If we do not cooperate with the heavenly agencies, Satan will take possession of the heart and make it his abiding place. Mm. Yeah, the Bible talks about it, or Jesus said, if you're not with me, you're, you're against, against me. me. Mm -hmm. And that's what, you, if you're not with Christ, then you're mm -hmm. automatically inviting the Satan in. What we don't realize, I've had a lot of people tell me, well, I'm not for Jesus, but I'm not for the devil. I'm just in the middle. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm my own person. We were born on the devil's side. Right. It's not, we're not standing on neutral ground and we got to make a choice who we're going to serve. We were born on the wrong side no. with the sentence of death on ourselves, the Bible says. Hmm. When we choose Christ, we come out from under that dominion. Amen. Amen. That's why Jesus came to set the captives free. That's right. Mm -hmm. This is another article that I really love. Um, Youth Instructor, 1892. It says, Jesus pitied and loved not only those who sought to be obedient and loving, but those also who were wayward and perverse. Jesus has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He still loves and pities the erring, seeking to draw them to himself so that he may give them divine aid. He knows that a demon power is struggling in every soul, mm. striving for the mastery or the dominion. But Jesus came to break the power of Satan and to set the captives free. Mm. Hallelujah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Today, he says, I stand at the door and knock. If any man or woman hears my voice, my word, and opens the door of their heart, he promises, I will come into you and sup with you and they with me. Mm. And I want to encourage all of our, our listening audience, our brothers and sisters and friends, look up these references in Matthew 4, 4 and John 6, John chapter 6, verse 27 through 58. Because Jesus says, I'll come into them and sup with them and eat with them. And for me, most of my life, I just read that. And I was like, fine, mm. he's coming in to eat with me. What does that mean? Mm. What are we eating? Mm. Look up those verses and do some reading. Even if you just take a week and study just those verses, you will be shocked what the Lord will reveal to you. You will mm. love it. Mm. Anyway. I, I think it's so neat that, like, you know, there's this constant theme of food in the Bible. Like, it starts over with, uh, you know, falling because we ate the wrong piece of food. But God places us in the garden. First command, you can eat of any tree of the garden except for that one. And then the end, when we get to heaven, what's the first thing we do? We eat We're going to eat food. Amen. It's a major part of our experience with yeah. God. Bless and Amen. And so, you know, this is not a, a beat you up, you have to eat only, you know, grass and... <laughs> you hate your food. Yeah. God's created a lot of really wonderful things. And, I, you know, when you when you learn to eat food that is good for your body, don't you feel good? Yeah. I mean, doesn't it feel yeah. good to, to you know, have a juice, vegetable juice or something, you know, and you're just like, wow, I feel like great. I'm awake. And, you know, you go eat a bunch of burgers and fries and you're like, ah, when am I going to go to sleep? You know what's weird? When you just said that, I thought about there's some foods that I like the taste of, and it may be whatever, vegetarian or vegan. But after I eat them, they, they feel great while I'm eating. But afterward, I don't feel great. Yeah. But when I sit down and I eat the way God wants me to, 
I feel good afterward. Yeah, I actually yeah. feel better afterward. Mm. Yeah, it's more sustaining. It's more long lasting, and and that's just a that's just a testament. God God designed food for us to enjoy. I Amen. It can be Amen. enjoy, and and so uh, I feel like we've kind of ruined our taste buds with these hyper sweet foods because you know if you eat um, some candy and then eat some fruit right behind it, you're not even going to taste it compared yeah. to the candy. And I, I started kind of like a keto diet. I was really strict on it and I'm, I'm still doing it, but um, that's like very le- low sugars, low carbohydrates. And now fruit tastes amazing because I don't get to eat it a lot. It's too high in sugar or whatever. But if I eat a banana or something, it's like, wow, this thing is so good. Mm-hmm. You can actually Amen. bring the sensitivity back to your sweet taste buds. I had a man that told me that years ago. He said, Eric, he said, fast for a couple of days. And I fasted, you know, it was a little more than five days. Not much, but a little more than five days. At the end of five days, when I ate that first piece of lettuce, the mm-hmm. lettuce by itself, I was like, I put that in my mouth and I was like, and I never knew it tasted like this. All it was right. like all of a sudden, like my brain was like exploding. Like, wow, I didn't know lettuce had this flavor. Yeah. But by by going off of all the rich stuff, all of a sudden it was like that changed. And people yeah. can do that. They'll go like on a fruit you know, fast for, for a week. Try that for a week or try doing just salads or whatever your body can handle. But just by getting rid of all the processed stuff, all of a sudden you'll find there's flavor there that you never realized. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You Try the what, Daniel diet. You yeah. know what gives meat its flavor? Vegetables. That's right. true. That's, that's what good, you're seasoning it with, that's right? That's a good point. There's so many different varieties of fruits and vegetables. It's so much to explore and to taste, find out what you like and don't like. But there's like a small variety of, of meats. You can mm. season it all different types of ways, but there's a small variety of meats. It's just giving things a try, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. Open up yeah. your mind and trying different things. The Lord Amen. has a lot out there for us Amen. to explore. Amen. So there's a Daniel challenge for you guys out there. Um, Just give it a test. Do it for 10 days. Just give yourself 10 days and say, I'm going to eat like I know God would want me to eat. Healthy things, things that are good for your body, things that are good for your soul. In the right proportions. In the right proportions. (laughs) And you will see that that is literally... it, it's it's an enjoyable experience, and I believe you'll 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 find a blessing there. So there's a lot to chew on during this uh, uh, talk right here, but uh, we hope that you guys were blessed. Please leave a comment if you have a question. Um, leave it in the, the the comment section below. We'd love to try to answer your questions. If you like this video, give it two thumbs up, and uh, you know, thank you so much for stopping by. We hope that you'll come back again next week. There has been very few movies in the history of the world that have completely changed our world. And in 1999, a movie titled The Matrix hit the world stage. These stories are often told and seen over and over again. Is it simply just to make money? Or is there something more nefarious behind it?